Mark Bergevin was really busy this offseason, but is it enough for his team to make the playoffs? We talk about this and more as we return with the first Hockey Inside Out show of the 2021 season. My name is Julian McKenzie. I am the new host of the Hockey Inside Out show. It's an honor to host this prestigious show and be alongside these wonderful panelists, uh, Montreal Gazette columnist Stu Cowan, former Canadians defenseman Rick Green, and Jessica Resnack of CBC Daybreak Montreal. Hopefully you all had in, had great holidays, and I'm sure you guys are as, as excited as I am uh, for an upcoming NHL season. I can't wait. Four months have been a long time. <laughs> oh my God. Four months has been a long time. And the Canadians have made the most of the last few months with all the roster turnover that's taken place. Josh Anderson, Tyler Toffoli, Jake Allen, Joel Edmondson, Michael Froelich, Corey Perry is on the team now. And, and I didn't even mention the rookie Alexander Romanoff, the Russian rookie who hopes to catch on with the big club this year. Of all of the new faces, whether through trades, whether through free agency, whether through the draft or anything like that, of all the new players coming in, which one do you think will have the biggest impact on the team this coming season? I think the Canadians are hoping it's going to be Josh Anderson. Uh, you know, the big power forward this team has been missing for so many years. You know, big six foot three, 226 pound uh, right winger. You know, Mark Bergevin is banking on it. You know, give him a seven year, $38.5 million contract, which is a $5.5 million a year annual sal salary cap hit, which ties him with Jonathan Drouin for the highest paid forward on the team. So, you know, they're, they're really banking on him. Uh, you know, Anderson's coming off uh, major sh shoulder surgery. Uh, he only played 26 games last year with Columbus. He had one goal. Uh, the Canadians and Mark Bergeron are hoping he can regain to the form from the previous season when he scored 27 goals. So I think, you know, that's the guy I think that they're really, really banking on. Uh, he's looked good the first couple of days at training camp. He's on a line with Nick Suzuki and Jonathan Drouin. And Suzuki, when he was talking to us the other day, it was sort of funny. He said during practice, at one point, uh, Anderson sped down the wing, and uh, Joy and Suzuki looked at each other afterwards and went, wow, we didn't realize he was that fast. So I think that's the guy that the Canadians are counting on having the biggest impact. I, I agree with you on him, Stu, as well as Jake Allen, I think, is a real big addition looking at what the scheduling is going to be uh, moving forward here with it condensed and the, the grind. I think they really have to uh, count on a guy like Jake stepping in there and and, you know, giving Kerry a little bit of a relief time because uh, it's going to be grueling. It's going to be tough. And uh, they're going to need uh, uh, excellent goaltending from both of them in order for them to uh, have some success. I'm excited to see what Tyler Toffoli is able to bring to this Montreal Canadiens team. He has the experience of winning Stanley Cup, also playing in the Western Conference. He's used to facing some bigger teams, and I think he's exactly the kind of player that the Montreal Canadiens need. He's been practicing on a line with Jesperi Kokniemi and Yoel Armia, and I think that would be a great third line for the Canadiens if that sticks for opening night. And uh, he's been someone that's name has been rumored with the Montreal Canadiens for a few years, trying to acquire him through trades. Finally, he was able to to uh, come to Montreal. So uh, looking forward to see the addition of him uh, to the Canadiens lineup. Yeah, the Jake Allen situation is going to be interesting, Rick, because it's going to be interesting to see how many games he plays. Uh, you know, Carey Price said the other day he does, never likes to give up the net. You know, Carey Price <laughs> likes to play a lot of games, and it'll be interesting to see how he handles maybe being told that he's not playing yeah. certain games. I think the other thing that's going to help with the goaltending situation is they're carrying three goalies, so Charlie Lindgren's going to be with the team. I don't think he'll play any games unless somebody gets hurt. But he'll be able to take Carey Price's spot in practice uh, some days. And I think that'll really help. As Price said the other day, he says he likes to practice, but he doesn't necessarily like being on net for all these shooting drills where he's getting hit with 100 pucks. So he'd be able to step to the side and work with goalie coach Stefan Waite while Charlie Lindgren takes a lot of the shots in practice. And it's also going to be interesting because of their practice time. Uh, you know, there's, they're playing almost every second night. And yeah. uh, it's going to really be tough for them to get some good quality practice time in. Uh, like we saw before and uh, you know to have different guys um, in your lineup that you can insert in the few times that you do practice is probably a bonus and giving those guys that are, are grinding it out on the uh, on the game schedule uh, a little bit of time off to to recharge their battery and, and stay sharp and I think uh, seeing Carey Price fresh and rested uh, previously uh, you know in in the season 
uh, we saw what he's capable of doing. And I think this is going to be a fine line in them deciding, okay, Kerry, uh, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to take a step back. You're going to have to try and recharge because we need you at 100% in order for us to uh, to get into the playoffs. Yeah, and Coach Julian said the other day, too, that there'll probably be more video days on off days than practice days this season, keeping guys rested. The Canadians only have so much time to get ready during this training camp as they'll be preparing themselves for the grueling Scotia NHL North Division. <laughs> that sounds like a really long, clunky name, or the Canadian Division, or I don't know what you guys are going to call this division. I'll try to stick with Canadian Division. We're going to be in for a lot of rivalry games against the Leafs, some chippiness against, some chippiness against the Sens. We'll get to see Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl a few times, the Winnipeg Jets, the Vancouver Canucks, the Calgary Flames. Where do the Canadians stack up against all those teams? Where do you all see the Canadians finishing in the North Division standings? That's another name. <laughs> um, I think the Canadians have a good chance of finishing close to the top, at least in the top three, with all these moves that Mark Bergevin was able to make during the offseason. I think this is the first time in a really long time that you look at the Canadians roster to start the season and say, wow, they actually have depth. They can be a competitive team. They have size. They've got strength. They've got a backup goaltender. And because of all those uh, things I just mentioned, I think that the Canadians have the possibility of being in the top three of this division. It's not going to be easy with, uh, you know, the Leafs, the Calgary Flames also being very competitive. But I, I like their chances this year. I, I think the, I agree with you, Jessica. I, I put Edmonton and Toronto maybe ahead of them and Montreal coming into the third spot. Uh, but what I'm really looking forward to because of the number of games, obviously, they're going to play against each other, building some some rivalries and some real entertaining hockey and some some real hate games back uh, like the days when the Nordiques and, and the Canadians used to play. Yeah, following up on that, can someone say Kachuk Brothers? <laughs> I think that's, that's why Corey Perry, I think, is going to be important on this team either. I mean... Uh, the Kachuk brothers can be a pain in the butt, but Corey Perry is even better at it and more experienced at it. So uh, Kachuk brothers meet uh, Mr. Perry. Uh, <laughs> as far as where the Canadians rank, I think Toronto still has the, the most firepower in the Canadian division. Canadian fans won't want to hear that. Uh, with the Leafs, it always comes down to goaltending and defense. But I think for myself, I think the Leafs are still the, the team I would expect to finish first. Then you have Calgary, Edmonton, and Montreal in the next three. And I think those are the four teams that are going to, uh, make the playoffs in the Canadian division. I, I thought the Canadians probably third, uh, maybe behind Toronto and Calgary. Edmonton's so hard to tell you. You get the Conor McDavid factor and dry uh, it, There's so many points, but they have other holes. So uh, this is a solid Canadian team. So I, I think that they should make the playoffs. If they don't make the playoffs, I think uh, Jeff Molson's not going to be a very happy owner. Um, but it should be fun to watch. And like I said, I, the Canadians, I figure third or fourth. Uh to Jess's point, I just want to say in terms of how this Canadians team is composed, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, and especially with the forward group, this is as deep of a forward group for the Montreal Canadiens I might have ever seen. And I know it's because of how uh, things are going with, with the taxi squad and the extra bodies you can carry. But uh, do you guys share that same viewpoint? Like this is a pretty deep team. Yeah, I mean, you look at, you know, the guys are on the fifth line. I mean, Corey Perry was on the fifth line at practice his first day on the ice. I don't think he'll be there when the season starts. Uh, you know, a guy like Arturi Lekkinen, like, is he going to be on this uh, starting roster? You know, these are guys that were regulars going for Paul Byron's another one. So, yeah, I mean, the depth uh, and on defense, they have depth now also. That's something the Kings have really not had for so long. And uh, I think that's the biggest improvement Mike Bergeron made over the offseason, just depth. And as um, you know, as Rick mentioned earlier, at the goaltending position also. And I, I think it's really important uh, to work from the back uh, back end out. And if you look at your goaltending, solid. And uh, I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, their defensive uh, group. Uh, I think they're going to be really tough to play against. They're big, they're strong, they're quick. Um, there's a lot of the uh, opposition teams are not going to have that much fun, uh, hopefully playing against the Montreal Canadiens defensemen because they uh, they can play any type of game. Uh, but the bottom line is they're going to make other teams pay for any of the uh, space that they want to take up in the defensive zone. Building from the back end, that Rick spoken like a true defenseman. <laughs> well, you know what? The old story is you never yeah. try the forward. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> 
But for many years, you know, when you looked at the Canadians' depth, it was young players with very little NHL experience or the other way that the, the players, you know, were kind of on their way out of the NHL. And now you finally have players who have experience and are in their prime. And I, it's going to make for some great inner competition for who's going to make the lineup and who will be in. And I think that can only just help the Canadians. Yeah, it used to be if, if, if anybody got hurt in the Canadians, they were done. And if Carrie Price got hurt, season's over, right? Well, at least now with Jake <laughs> Allen, if, you know, knock on wood, nothing happens to Carrie Price. But if something were, I mean, Jake Allen's a capable backup stepping in there. He's got a Stanley Cup ring. You know, and we, we didn't really touch even on the fact that, uh, you know, the teams are going to have to hopefully stay healthy. You don't want to uh, lose uh, anybody for an extended period because – Obviously, it's going to leave a, a huge, uh, huge hole in your your lineup, and uh, is going to hurt you on your win loss uh, uh, record. So, it's going to be it's going to be tough to see uh, you know who can hold up in this in this grind, and hopefully they're going to stay healthy uh, and have everybody in the lineup that they like to have in the lineup. Yeah, and then the COVID nineteen factor also. I mean, look what's happened in the NFL. You know, the Denver Broncos have to play a game with a practice roster uh, guy playing quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen to the Canadians. I just want to say, though, just listening to all of you talk, this is the most optimistic I've heard people just go on rambling about the Montreal Canadiens maybe ever. we got to remember, this was a team last year that had two separate eight-game winless streaks, and then the pandemic happens, and all of a sudden they're in an extended playoff, and they win a play-in round against the Pittsburgh Penguins, and and – albeit because of size, they end up losing to the Philadelphia Flyers in the first round of the actual playoffs. But still, they end up going a little farther than a lot of people are going to give them credit for. But what about this year? Do you think the Montreal Canadiens, the way they're composed right now, are they built for an extended playoff run? Well, I think, you know, looking at, again, the additions, they, everybody was quick to jump on them and criticize them for their size. They weren't able to, you know, stand up to the big opposing forwards. And Bergevin went out and he, uh, he, he took care of that area by adding some, some good sized guys that can play, can skate with, with skill. And, uh, you know, I, I think that they're obviously much better off at this point uh, with the additions that, uh, to, to have some success moving forward. They, the expectations are there now. They've already said, hey, listen, uh, you know, it's time to advance. It's time to win. And uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, pressure on those guys to perform and, and get the results because uh, changes have been made. Uh, Bergevin has patched up some of the, uh, the problem areas that the team and everybody else outside the team had seen as problem areas. And now there's no excuses other than to uh, have a successful year and, uh, you know, get in the playoffs. And there's the players who really turn it on when it comes to the playoffs. And Corey Perry is definitely one of those guys. And having him on the Montreal Canadiens will be huge. If they make it into the playoffs, it could also be something that sparks some of the other players by seeing the way that Corey Perry is able to play. And if you think of some of the young players, the way that Nick Suzuki and Jesperi Kokniemi played back in the summertime and their first time facing, uh, you know, it was a different type of playoffs, but it was still a playoffs uh, in, in, in the NHL. And I think if they can continue to build on that, that will really help. And the fact that they have a lot of players, uh, hopefully they see healthy, at their disposal when it comes to the playoffs, that will help. And also being a bigger team, too, will help as well. Well, it's amazing what happens when Jeff Molson opens his wallet and spends up to the salary cap, right? I mean, this is a team the last three years has been $8 million roughly below the cap and should have missed the playoffs all three years. Uh, since Radulov and Markov left, uh, Mark Bergeron, as I've written many times, had no plan B, and they were stuck with that money, and they couldn't find anybody to take it. And, uh, you know, in life, you get what you pay for sometimes. So, if you know, in a salary cap world, if you're playing $8 million under the cap, it's kind of hard to compete. But, you know, can they have an extended playoff run? I think they could because of the depth they have. You know, when they, you know, Max Pacioretty took a lot of heat when the Canes were eliminated in the first round by the Rangers a couple of years ago because he didn't score. He was the only guy, real scoring threat they had. So, you know, Rick, as a former coach, you'd know if you only have to shut down one offensive guy, it's a lot easier than when you have uh, offense spread through. And Carey Price has also shown, he showed last year again, uh, you know, in the playoffs last year, he had a 1.78 goals against average and a 936 save percentage. That should be enough to get past the first round at least, but they just didn't have the depth of scoring. 
And, uh, you know, against the Rangers, Carey Price was just as good a couple of years ago. So he showed, you know, Carey, the goaltending has been there the last two times the Canadians have been in the playoffs. They just haven't had the scoring depth. And I think they have that now, uh, along with the size. So how far can they go? Do I think this is a Stanley Cup team? No. But are they good enough to get into the playoffs and maybe win a round or two? I think so. I have to say, uh, 15-year-old me, you'd have to pinch him a couple times to if you were to tell him that Corey Perry would somehow play on this Montreal Canadiens team and could be possibly looked at as a contributor, let alone the fact that Ilya Kovalchuk already played on this team. Looking at the roster and, and seeing all the different players who are there, and I know it's really early considering uh, how long ago training camp started, what would you guys say is the biggest strength for the Montreal Canadiens this coming season? I think the fact that they are going into this season with a lot of confidence because of what they were able to do over the summertime. No one expected them to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. No one expected them to go to game six against the Philadelphia Flyers. And then all of a sudden, everyone's looking at the Montreal Canadiens a little bit differently. The off-season moves as well that people are saying, you know, this is a strong team. And I think that could also help the players once the season starts because they're not coming into this as the underdogs and with a lot of negativity around them. There's a lot of positivity positivity around them. And even Carey Price mentioned it this week when training camp started started that the, the experience the team got over the summer is going to be huge. And that's not something you can buy. And I think that is uh, one of the biggest uh, beneficial things for the, the Canadians. Julian, just to backtrack a little bit, were you even alive the last time the Canadians won the Cup? I know you're a young dude. I was not alive. I was not alive the last time the Montreal Canadiens won a Stanley Cup. I think that's that's been well documented by now. That says a lot. I mean, when I was in high school, the Canadians won the Cup four times in the five years I was in high school. It was like an annual thing. You skipped school and went to the Stanley Cup parade. I feel sorry for wow. the young guys who are Canadians fans. But just, just I, I think, throwing it in our faces, sorry. <laughs> I think if you look, I mean, depth and size, I think, are, are the two big things that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mark Bergevin has added to this team. All the defensemen are at least six foot. You know, Weber, 6'4", 229. Sherrod, 6'3", 234. Edmonton, 6'4", 227. Yes, I am reading these numbers. Petrie, 6'3", 208. Kulak, 6'1", 1982. Romanov, 6'2", 208. A new, new forward, Zanderson, 6'3", 226. The Foley, 6'1", 198. Perry, 6'3", 206. That's a lot of beef in this lineup, and that's something uh, that the Canadians have really been missing. So just the depth and size. You look what happened last year. You know, the Canes were off to a great start. They were like 11-5-3 and three when they went into Washington. They beat the Capitals. That's the same game where Byron and Drew got hurt, and that was it. They never recovered from that. And now we're talking about Paul Byron. He's a guy who might not even be on the opening night lineup, and if he is, he's on the fourth line. So I think that just shows you how much this team has uh, improved over the offseason and, and added size and depth. The size that they do have, I mean, they can also skate. They're quick. I mean, they can play – any type of game, if they want to play, uh, depending on who they're they're up against, they want to play a, a gritty bang and crash. They have the uh, the people that can play that way. But the uh, the bottom line is they're they're big, they're fast, and they have a, a a game that is an up tempo game. And these guys bringing in these larger bodies that can really motor uh, are are going to do nothing but complement uh, the system that they play. So. Uh, you know, let's uh, let's hope that they're going to perform up to their capabilities because they're going to be entertaining to watch. Got one last question for you all. A uh, bit of an exercise here. We all know about the value of staying healthy. We know there's a possibility of injuries. Uh, hopefully no COVID cases or few of them. Uh, but we all know with how this Montreal Canadian team has been for the past few years, if Carey Price goes down, the team looks to be in a lot of trouble. Which player, aside from Carey Price, can the Canadians least afford to lose to a long-term injury? Well, I, I, I think we've seen it previously in losing Weber. Uh, we've seen the damage done with Gallagher. These two guys are, are critical to the well-being of their team on and off the ice. And, uh, you know, we just hope that... Uh, uh, Again, with this grind of the uh, of this type of season, these guys are going to stay on the good side of uh, of the health and uh, be able to contribute to their hundred uh, percent capability without getting anything major happening to them. That's going to really hurt the team, I believe. But on the other side, they do have a little more depth uh, with their personnel that can step in and uh, maybe patch uh, that hole on a short term basis. But uh, you don't want to see key guys. I don't care what 
uh, franchise you are, you have your key guys go down, you'll see uh, you'll you'll see the team struggle. So let's hope for the best for them. To me, it's Brendan Gallagher. I mean, this guy, you know, Shea Weber's a captain. Brendan Gallagher is the heart and soul of this hockey team. <clears throat> you know, he's coming off the broken jaw and uh, the hip issue he had in the playoffs last year. He says he's 100% healthy now. Uh, I think what's going to help Gallagher this year, his style's never going to change. He's always going to go in the dirty areas. He's always going to be like a pinata in front of the uh, other team's net. Uh, but now... The way the lines are stronger, he's not necessarily the number one line, so I don't think he's going to have the same matchups against the defense. I don't think he's always going to be playing against the other team's number one and number two defensemen, which might make life a little bit easier for him. And there's going to be other guys in front of the net, Corey Perry, Anderson, big bodies that are going to be a pain in the butt for the opposing goalie. So it won't be all on Brendan Gallagher anymore. But again, he's a, you know the, 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 the draw straw that stirs the drink, I think is the saying, right? It's a short straw, but it certainly works. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, I'm going to say Jake Allen, that if, if for whatever reason, if he gets injured, then they're not in a very good situation. They're kind of back to where they began. And uh, as we've spoken about, they play so many games in such a short period of time, back to backs, that they definitely need to have a strong backup goaltender for Carey Price. So to that point, uh, if Jake Allen were to go down and the Canadians would have to rely on Charlie Lindgren as their backup, you would you feel confident? How would you feel about that situation? I think they're going to ride Carey Price more times than not because of that. Uh, I just don't necessarily think they have too much confidence in Carey uh, in uh, Charlie Lindgren, and that has kind of always been the problem: is they didn't have a backup goaltender that had 100% the backing of the coaching staff and probably some of the players. Yeah, the fact that it's only a 56 game schedule helps too. If, if Price had to play 55 games or 50, 50 <laughs> games or something like that. Uh, he's used to doing that. So uh, there's a shorter schedule, I think, will help if, uh, you know, if knock on wood, if something was to happen to Jake Allen. And well, I, think, I think Charlie Lindgren's shown that you can throw him in there a couple of games, and he's such a battler, Charlie Lindgren. I really like the kid. He's a smart kid. He's a fighter. He battles. You know, he was never drafted. Uh, so I, I don't think the Canes would be terrified about putting him in for a game or two, because at least he's going to battle and give you a chance. Yeah, that's a guy who, considering with the way the goalies are kind of deployed right now, he's essentially, any opportunity he gets from will be crucial for his NHL career going forward. I don't know if he's going to be part of the stable going forward, considering the guys behind him in terms of Caden Primo and even a Michael McNeven, who knows what his future is going to be in the organization. But Charlie Lindgren's a guy who's going to essentially, any opportunity he gets will be for his future career prospects. And with that, that's that's it for this week's episode. Uh, I'm pretty sure all the Habs fans will enjoy all the optimism and uh, we'll have to see how it goes for this coming season. Uh, which Canadians newcomer do you think will make the most impact this year? Visit HockeyInsideOut.com to check out our full episode and join the discussion in the comments section below.